So I've been advised to start with a story. So two days ago, I got one of those Facebook notifications which tells you what you were doing exactly a year ago. Um, and I found out that exactly a year ago, um, two days ago, I had just been thrown out of, um, news, oh, out of Parliament <laughs> um, and banned um, from Parliament. Um, so <laughs> Yeah, so at, at the time I was a full-time student um, at the University of Western Sydney, um, which if you know it is a very um, working class campus in a very working class area, um, the area I grew up in. Um, I was working part-time at Domino's um, under a pretty crappy manager <laughs> who cared um, much more about how many pizzas I made an hour than how many um, burns I had from the pizza oven. Um, and I was, yeah, really barely scraping by. Um, so Chris Pine was putting um, his deregulation legislation for the first time. Um, he was the then um, education minister under Abbott. Um, and it, it meant that I was, I mean, my degree was going to be tens of thousands more, but more expensive <laughs> degrees. Um, we're looking at massive hike ups, um, really massive, like, you know, medical and engineering especially. Um, we're really, um, yeah, facing down the barrel. Um, so myself and some other activists from the New South Wales Education Action Network got on a bus. We hired a bus um, and we trekked to Canberra. Um, and we smuggled a banner into Parliament um, under someone's shirt. <laughs> um, and as the we got into Parliament, um, we went through all the security miraculously. Um, and then we got into the, the gallery. Um, and then as the debate started, we got up, unfurled our banner, um, started chanting fund education, no deregulation, um, and promptly got our asses kicked out, um, <laughs> kicked right out <laughs> um, by the security people, um, who then called the cops and the cops came and told us that we were to leave and not come back. Um, and then so we were, yeah, we were driving home um, and we, I mean, we'd only got, I mean, we'd got maybe, you know, a good two minutes on TV, which was a gain, um, but we were feeling like, oh, you know, <laughs> was it worth, you know, was it worth the trip even? Um, and we were listening to the radio, and then we heard that um, the bill had just failed. Um, yeah. um, and then a few weeks later, Pine put another bill, <laughs> um, which was essentially the same bill, um, a bit nicely, a bit more nicely worded, um, but had most of the same nasties. Um, and not having really thought about doing this before, I locked myself to the door of the <laughs> University of Sydney Vice Chancellor's office. And I stayed there for about five hours. Um, <laughs> and we were told that it was an ineffective action um, because he didn't actually need to use his door that day. They didn't, he didn't need to use his office at all. Um, he was in Canberra that day, actually. Um, so we missed him in Canberra and then we missed him in his office. Um, but then we heard later that day that um, Chris Pine's second deregulation bill had just failed in the Senate. Um, so that was two <laughs> absolutely humiliating defeats of um, Pine's deregulation um, legislation. Um, and that was, yeah, that was my, definitely my only experience of a winning campaign. Um, and still, you know, which I still hold with fond memories. It's a kind, kind of weird thing to, you know, I mean, you go home and you tell your mum that you just got banned from Parliament or you just got yourself locked onto a door. Um, and it's kind of like, why, why did I do that? <laughs> you know, well, she's asking, why did I do that? I mean, at the time, I was very convinced. One, because it was very personal to me, um, because, you know, I didn't expect to have the opportunity of an education like I did, um, but I'd got in there. <laughs> um, and it was, it looked like it was, you know, basically going to be taken away. Um, the, you know, my education and the education of all my classmates <laughs> in my um, working class university. Um, and I mean, education is under the pump um, in this country and in most others. Um, it's becoming less and less accessible um, and the specific oppression of youth um, as a demographic is increasing. Um, a new report by the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence um, recently came out saying that youth unemployment has risen to double the national unemployment rate. Um, the overall unemployment rate is 6%, um, but for 15 to 24-year-olds, it's gone up to 12.5, and in some areas, it's as high as 20%. Um, the rates of youth unemployment have been on the rise for the past two years, as well as the length of time um, young people are unemployed for. And youth who do choose to study at university um, are essentially facing a life of poverty. 
Um, a report commissioned by Universities of Australia in July last year um, found that one in five students regularly skip meals and two in three students live below the poverty line. The report surveyed 12,000 full-time undergraduate and postgraduate students and the results show that youth poverty has reached critical levels and is having serious effects on the lives of young people in Australia. The cost of living is rising uh, while wages, especially for young workers, are not keeping pace with the cost of living. Um, and this coupled with the high rates of youth unemployment, I'm shorter than I thought I was, um, mean that many students will have difficulty even earning a wage. Um, and these poverty weights are compounded by the deep cuts to social services, um, the rising costs of public transport, um, the increasing corporatisation of the university system, and it means that students are forking out huge amounts um, of money for the services they need while receiving less and less genuine support. Uh, cuts to youth allowance and student scholarships mean that students from the working class are less likely to be able to maintain their studies. And with each cut, more students drop um, their studies and many can't keep up with the intensified curriculum and the large impersonal class sizes. And this generation of students is paying far more for far, far less. And it's this kind of perfect storm of social inequality and impoverishment that is making student life increasingly untenable for working class students in the university system. Um, and it means that a lot of high school students are kind of thinking, I probably can't afford to go to university at all. Um, as well as poor wages and working conditions, young workers are often subjected to bullying, sexual harassment, physical and verbal abuse, um, and are more likely to put up with it um, than other workers because of their weaker position in the workforce. Um, the proportionally higher unemployment rate among youth contributes to their weak bargaining position um, as there's a reserve pool of potential employees to hire if young people refuse to accept um, bad conditions or bullying. So it's important to ask where the attacks are coming from. Um, decades of the Liberal and Labor offensive on higher education has put the cost of an educated society onto the shoulders um, disproportionately of working class youth and off of the state. Um, despite the system actually needing skilled workers to operate the increasingly complex uh, economy, they're, need a, they're determined to stick someone else with the bill. Um, but the rising fees are increasingly pricing the poor out of higher education and turning it into a commodity that only the rich can afford to consume. As universities are becoming increasingly privatised, the courses they offer are more and more driven by market demand. Um, and there's a push for more technical and professional courses at the expense of the humanities and social sciences. So there's less room for critical thought and more focus on training to fit the corporate mould. The Liberal government has notice, uh, notably recently launched a kit um, for high school teachers um, to stop youth radicalisation. It came with an example of Karen. Um, I'm sure we all know Karen. Um, a woman who was radicalised by the environment movement and eventually was reformed into a better person, i.e. someone who takes the legal route um, in their campaign for justice. Um, and it was actually a laughing stock for the entire country. No one took it seriously. Um, and it was really just, yeah, laughed out of court. Um, but I mean, it's, it's worth noting that that was something put forward by Tony Abbott's Liberal government. Um, and not, <laughs> not Malcolm Turnbull's kind of slick, um, slick appearance. Um, but you can, you can see quite clearly that the politics and the policies are exactly the same. Um, but they're done with much more tact, which is actually much more dangerous. Um, so this anti-activist campaign um, also supports the underlying campaign against Muslim youth, um, especially young Muslim men. Um, who are demonised basically just for existing. Uh, neoliberalism thrives on divisive racism and serves to justify Australia's involvement in the war on the Middle East um, to the Australian working class. Whipping up fear about dangerous Muslims to keep the attention on women who wear hijabs and off of the privileged minority. Indigenous youth are also hit particularly hard under Australian ne neoliberalism. Um, they're heavily represented in murders in custody, um, both Jalika Du um, and TJ Hickey. Jalika was 22 years old um, and TJ was only 17 years old, um, two Indigenous youth killed in custody. Um, 
This is compounded by the growing rates of homelessness, unemployment and the growing suicide and mental illness rates. Young women are still growing up under the same Dacronian um, anti-abortion laws that their mothers grew up under um, in most Australian states, as well as growing into the prime danger age for domestic violence. And this is the life of youth and students today. Um, growing impoverishment and desperation amongst young people, the lack of a strong student organising union, um, coupled with the rising casualisation and unemployment of the workforce that they, they are going to enter, um, is a pressure cooker on the youth of this nation. These attacks hit harder in the context of a lack of a viable progressive student movement, um, which has contributed to the low ebb um, of student organising. In the context of the co-option and demobilisation of the student movement and the strain put on poor youth, um, it's easy to wonder if youth are still paying attention. Um, well, a poll on, done by Galaxy Research found that 81% of 18 and 24 to 24 year olds support marriage equality um, as compared to 51% of 50 to 60 year, uh, 64 years, year olds. Um, and over and over again, they're taking it to the streets. Um, youth and particularly high school students are mobilising nationally in massive numbers for marriage equality um, and they're actually leading the movement. Um, even the takeoff of non-governmental organisations like Wear It Purple in 2010, um, which target youth in campaigns for better services for the LGBTQIA community, um, shows that youth aren't just the audience um, in this movement, but they're actually taking on more and more of the driving force. Youth are getting active around refugee rights, especially young refugees, um, which has strengthened the kids out of detention demand. Um, in Brisbane, students at Yeronga High recently organised to resist the removal of their Iranian refugee classmate to, de to detention. Um, we're seeing a younger Indigenous leadership emerge from the SOS Black Australia movement to stop the community closures. Um, the People's Climate Marches were massive and a lot of the crowds were made up of young people literally interested in saving the world. Youth are consistently impassioned by, the, by environmentalism, um, which has been a political trend since the early 1990s um, in the lead up to the Rio Earth Summit. Um, and there's a certain political agency um, because the, it is the younger generations which will suffer the most of the worsening um, climate change and environmental catastrophe. Because of the investment um, that youth have in building a safe climate future and addressing the damage done by previous generations, um, this remains a radicalising issue for young people and is one of those issues which can draw youth to anti-capitalist conclusions. Um, and of course, it was students who beat back Tony Abbott and Chris Pine's fee deregulation agenda, not once but twice, um, and effectively forced the hand of Malcolm Turnbull in abandoning the same style of rampant attacks on accessible education, at least for the time being. Um, but with Malcolm's soft approach on attacking education and Labor's soft approach on defending it, the movement ultimately failed to harness the momentum of our victory and put the call for free education. So despite the limits of the student movement, um, youth do have an important role um, to play in building the movements and sparking the fight among broader layers. Um, and so, I mean, that kind of brings us to asking what the alternative is. Um, student poverty isn't inevitable, um, but it relies on youth staying quiet and neoliberalism prevailing. And all the signs are there that youth are still awake, still listening, and in many ways still political. Under neoliberalism, the needs of young people are ignored. Um, we need to put the needs of the young back on the agenda. So how is it in such a rich country that youth poverty is growing and we don't have the money to feed house and educate children and young adults? The answer is simple, the system wasn't built for us. Uh, youth are suffering because capitalism wants or even needs um, to profit off us, not to meet our needs. We need to start seriously addressing youth unemployment um, and asking how is it that with so much work to do in society there's a lack of jobs for us. The alternative to rising costs of living are taking the basic utilities of society back into community hands. We're not going to get the alternatives on a plate. <laughs> we have to fight for them. And the way to do that is to build a mass movement of youth and students. Youth and students need to educate, democratically organise and beat back the neoliberal offensive, take back our education and reclaim our basic rights. Thank you.